What's up all you art students out there? Today I'm gonna to introduce you guys to the new project, which is Mycography Self-Portraits. I mean, you might just be saying, self-portraits, why do we have to do self-portraits? Pretty much it's a classic art project that every Art One student has to do all over the world. It's like a rite of passage kind of thing. You're also probably wondering, what is mycography? Well, you remember in our last project where we did stippling and hatching, cross hatching, smooth, scumbling, you know, all that other stuff to create value, to render value across the surface to make it look like it's a three dimensional form? Well, mycography is doing that, except you're using words. So essentially, what you're doing is you're using words to create value. The more words, you put on a piece of paper, the darker the value, and the less words and the more spread out the letters, the less value it is. The reason I'm in front of the school building is because there's some really great examples of mycography portraits as you walk into the front. So let's go on up there and check them out. Can't forget my face mask. My glasses, my glasses are fogging up. Do you see it? <laughs> Me and Miss Della Corsa do this project every year together and it's basically a portrait of somebody but you use words to put down value. I'm going to show you guys some examples. Barack Obama and if you look at it from a distance it looks like his face but as you get closer you'll notice I think it actually says Barack Obama. All right let's back up and look at another one. Look kind of looks like Muhammad Ali but from a distance you can see the values. You can actually see here's the darker values and it goes lighter. But guess what? They're words. See that? They're letters. Look at the values. The values are created by letters. I think it says right. Martin Luther King. All right, that's focused. Now let's see if I can zoom in to see the words. I'm going to go back down to my room so I can show you guys how we're going to get this done. I'm also going to show you guys how to do some research, what kind of rough drafts we're going to do. All right, so the first rough draft we're going to do, we're going to create a value scale, a new value scale. But this value scale is going to be made of mycography instead of hatching, cross hatching, etc., stuff like that. The second rough draft we're going to do is going to be a sphere value worksheet, except this one is going to be made of mycography. Now these portraits are going to be gridded, meaning you're going to have to take a picture of yourself and then put a grid on it and copy it over. That means we got to practice making grids. So I'm going to send you home with a picture so you can practice making a grid on it. You're going to have to take a ratio of the small grid and multiply it times three to turn into the big grid. But don't worry, it sounds like a lot, but it's not. You're going to take it in small bites. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So let me go ahead and show you these. The way we get to this final product right here, which by the way, this is one of my students. I'm gonna take this mask off now, adios mask. So the way we get to this, you first learn value scales, then you learn how to grid. You grid from something small to something bigger. And you might notice that all these are made of words. And that is the kicker. That's why it looks like that. Just words. Her word was egg. She just wrote the word egg over and over. And how you do your grid greatly affects your ability to get the proportions right on your face. Words, all words. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some research techniques on how to start looking this stuff up. Uh, take a look at what other people have done. You're gonna more than likely come across Miss Vela Corsa's work as well because she's been te teaching mycography for a long, long time but we've been working together on this for a couple of years now and the results are fantastic so i'm going to switch on over to my computer show you guys what i'm looking for i'm going to go over some due dates and etc for that all right thanks computer now whenever i went to the internet i typed in mycography portrait as you will see right here mycography portrait and you'll see a whole bunch of stuff that automatically pops up so let's take a quick look around to see what popped up so we got a lot of really good options here something that we're not going for something that looks like this this is all one value well we're looking for something that has multiple values like this would be considered acceptable this is acceptable so as you're digging around you might find some stuff that you like you're like oh that looks good so how do we get to this point how do we make one of these? So I'm gonna go over that real fast. The way you make something look like this is you're gonna do a gridded self-portrait. And essentially you have to take a selfie, a picture of yourself. When you take a picture of yourself, let's make this one real big. Here's a picture. When you take a picture of yourself, then you can put a grid on it. 
ding, ding, ding. And then this grid is proportionate uh, to the bigger grid. The grid, the first grid that we're gonna make is just going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. We're going to take a drawing and we're gonna put a five inch by five inch square on it and make a half inch by half inch grid. And then we're gonna make another grid and we're gonna copy everything over there just by drawing what we see. The final grid will be a one to three ratio, meaning everything we do on the small grid will be multiplied by three to get to the bigger grid. It will literally be three times bigger. So the five inch by five inch square, which will be the selfie of you, will multiply times three. And I can already tell you're doing math inside your head. So that's gonna be 15 inches by 15 inches. That's how big your final is gonna be. This is a one-to-one, -one, meaning the original size of the photograph is gonna be the size of the final. So they're the exact same size. While something like this, that looks like a one-to-three ratio, meaning this is the one and you multiply it times three to get the final. People have been doing gridding for a long time. Take a picture, put a grid on it, make it bigger. There are a ton of videos on how to grid. A ton of them. So, I mean, seriously, you could type in gridded self-portrait videos. How to use a grid for method for drawing. Realistic grid drawings. How to draw a portrait with the grid method. I mean, there are so many videos. The difference is we are going to use micrography as opposed to all these other ones. They're going to use a different style of rendering. Let's go over a calendar really quick to make sure everyone knows when everything's happening. So, this is the beginning of the grading period right there, October 19th. The end of the grading period is right here on December 4th. There it is. The, uh, the first parks report will go out November 6th. The goal is to have, of course, all four art writings need to be done before the 4th. I strongly suggest you start working on your art writings, get them done as soon as possible just to knock them out of the way. You should have your two value scales, your micrography value scale and your sphere value worksheet done with micrography done by this Friday. And you should definitely have your, your selfie either mailed to me, uh, emailed to me so I can print it off, but you should definitely have it by this Friday. Remember, I'm having a supply pickup the 24th from 10 to 4 up here at the school. Coming up in November, the 2nd through the 6th, you should start working on the practice grid, meaning you should take either the Mona Lisa or that dude sitting in a chair, put a five inch by five inch grid, grid them up, and then make your own grid the 2nd through the 6th. Making a grid is very, very important. You have to make sure you do this right. Then you're gonna make your own big grid on the 9th, put it over there, and you start working on that the 13th. The goal is to start working on your final the 16th. You need to have your final started by the 16th so you can start working on it. So when you get back from Thanksgiving break, you can knock it out. Because remember people, this week is gonna go by real quick when you get back from Thanksgiving break. And grades are due the fourth, and at four o'clock on the fourth, I'm done. So the goal is to be done with your final and put it inside your art portfolio by the second. If you have any questions, you're welcome to email me and talk to me about grades. I'm very open and transparent when I talk about grades. Now, if you're saying to yourself, Mr. West, that week when we come back from Thanksgiving break, this week right there, dude, it's gonna be crazy. I'm gonna still be in like vacation mode. I'm not gonna be wanting to do anything. Well, if you know that about yourself, then I strongly advise you to be done with that final by the 20th, at least like 75% done. Make sure it's definitely majority done by the 20th. The trick to doing high school is not necessarily the work, but it's also managing your time. You have to manage your time wisely. And especially now in the time of COVID, when a lot of the responsibility of managing your time is placed upon you, the student, you gotta get that done. Now I can help you out to some degree, but to another degree, you kinda have to help yourself. So here's my website. I've just posted this today, my micrography self-portrait. I got all the due dates and all the rough drafts, et cetera. The supplies you're gonna need, and I'm gonna make a separate supply video. So there you go, that is it. The goal here is micrography self-portrait, basically making a portrait of yourself using words. I look forward to seeing what you guys can do. If you got any questions, let me know. I got you back 110%, thanks.